you want like a ridge in the center where the rivet holes are at. And you want to make sure you get these front leading edge tabs because once they're in there, it's kind of hard to uh, get sealing on those. But apply it like that. Take off all the excess. I gotta pull this cradle to the edge of the table or a little bit off. Be careful so it won't fall. Okay guys, so we're doing the last 10-0-4 rib. Gotta get the edges. We're going to just ease this rib down, and since we're getting to the end of the tank, it's going to be harder to squeeze this rib in between the skin and not touch the side, so you got to be careful and line it up right along the rib line and drop it in straight. Try not to touch the sides of the skin with the sealant until it gets further down until it gets further down like that. Okay. Now, there we go. So you wanna press these, press in these tabs, press in this tab here and then press kinda of up so you can Get this rib in alignment. Then you want to add some more Clicos and work your way down from the trailing edge to the leading edge. And like so. Alright, so let's get a couple more. When we have it kind of lined up, you want to just put in some rivets. So now it should be pretty much mostly aligned. See over here, there's some sealant leaking out. Just want to kind of we'll do a quick cleanup of that.
All right, so let's see. Um, okay, next one up is. Good. Next one up. This one is done a little bit differently. I'm just gonna take a bead of sealant and place it on the inboard side or inboard edge of the outboard rib. Now. All right guys, that's all done. I got all the ribs riveted in. The outboard rib of the tank is riveted, riveted in and it's completed. A little bit of tissue, sorry. Okay, uh, I just put a little bit more sealant over the fuel tank cap flange there. Uh, and as the plans called for, let me get it, the camera down in here so you guys can see it better. Um, the bead of sealant around the inboard of the 1003 rib right here, that's going to stop fuel from exiting. So that will prevent you from having to capsulate the rivets on the outboard side of the tank. I still have to put the uh, cover the tooling holes with the rivets that I have them coming tomorrow. But that's it, guys. I just had to put the J stiffener in and the vent line and then the baffle. So it's looking good. All right, guys, have a great night. I am going to sleep. Take care. Happy building. Good morning, guys. So everything is all done except the rear baffle. I have these fittings torqued in. Now I am doing an extra Sewer Owner fuel level sender. So this is what I had to modify from the rear baffle and make. I took a template. It's over here somewhere. Okay, it's over here. So I took a piece of paper um, off the plans and I cut it out, laminated it, and then I made a aluminum template, traced it, cut it out, and riveted it on the nut plates with these screw holes to hold the fuel level sender in. I put this in last night. This is kind of simple. So I'm doing two, let me turn this baffle around here. This is the outboard sender. It's an optional sender, so you don't have to do it, but I did. And this is the 
this little tab here is the fill tab. Um, so this one only goes down halfway and up to the full mark. Um, and again, this is the ER tank. So if it was a standard tanks, you use just one. But yeah, so I just put this one in, the inboard one. Now the inboard sender goes full range of motion, so it goes, and I had a problem with, I bent the wire, you know, the plans say four and one eighth inch from the float to the 90 degree first bend, and then a opposite bend, 90 degrees, four inches from the center of the wire. So yeah, basically did that, and then it was all, um, not straight and it was hitting the the stiffener here the top part of this float was hitting the stiffener and it was also hitting the vent line so I had a hand bend down the vent line without affecting any stress on this fitting there's full deflection of up full deflection of down. And if you listen carefully, there's no binding. You got about a sixteenth of an inch of clearance from the float to the bottom of the skin and up the other way. Max. Looks good, guys. Hello, everybody. So, I probably had the craziest week of building this airplane yet. Vans Air Force has a lot of stuff that you could find out pretty much the answer to within a quick period of time. However, I have been driving myself crazy with the Stuart Warner floats. As you know, I am doing the ER tanks with an optional second sender in the outboard section of each fuel tank. Let me show you. So there's a pass-through fitting um, that goes through the root rib here and it does not touch the tank. So these plastic bushings isolate the bolt into just the plastic and it avoids contacting and grounding out to the metal fuel tank. So you have to first cut off the black wire on the, uh, again, these are the Stuart Warner senders, and these are being run in series. So, a lot of people have said that they can't be run, or they can be run, but they can't work right, or wh whatever, whatever, whatever. So, basically, on the, the outboard sender is left alone. You just wire it up. Center terminal. All right, so, okay, so back to this for a second. So you cut off the ground wire and you run the pass through. I drilled a hole in the root rib, but you take the pass through fitting and you put a uh, connector on there and you solder the wire, the other end of the wire, this is the eight inch wire, to the end of the terminal here on the sender where the ground wire was removed. Then you run the wire coming off the center terminal screw on the outboard sender and you run the wire to the through, the pass through fitting, the outside portion of that. I just have it hand tight because I just did this about an hour ago so it's still wet, they're pro seal but I globbed this pro seal on here. I put it on the bushings inside, outside. I use the O-rings. So this is not gonna leak, or I hope not, right? So all you have is the wire coming from the outboard sender, which is left alone. This ground terminal is, is, uh, is left remaining on there. And you modify only the inboard sender. So now, all right, so let's simulate a fully empty tank, right? 495 ohms we're getting. Then you give 
full, 100% throw, full tank, 279. Now this is when the inboard sender is showing full, outboard sender is showing empty. Now you go full on the outboard sender, you're at 62 ohms. Empty on the inboard, full outboard, 278. Let's switch them up. Well, pretty close. So yeah, that's it guys.